Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry, and today I'm going to be driving what's known as the Whitefish Bay Scenic Byway, which is along Lake Superior going west from Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. So I'm going to stop and show you some of the scenic overlooks and anything else interesting I find along the way. And I'm starting here at the Point Iroquois Lighthouse and I have my shirt off because I'm going to go in swimming today in Lake Superior. So come along with me and I'll show you some of the sights along this scenic byway. Here's a map that shows the scenic byway. It starts at the little town of Brimley. And last night I spent at the Bay Mills Indian Casino that's right here. And then this morning drove up to here, the Point Iroquois Lighthouse. So now the rest of the day I'm going to be driving across here. And then when it gets away from the shoreline, it goes up north and goes back along the shore, continues that way. And the road all along Lake Superior is also called the Blue Highway. There is the lighthouse, and here is some information and history about the lighthouse. They do have a museum in here, but it says closed, 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 <laughs> and also closed. Now this is a Sunday morning. I don't know if it's going to open or not. I'll be here for a couple hours and find out. I've noticed a lot of these old lighthouses could really use a paint job, but I guess Finding money to paint them might be the challenge. <laughs> They're lucky enough to have the money to keep them open. And I don't think this foot and a half rock wall <laughs> around it is going to do much good. It would be nice to go in and even better go up to the top of the tower to get a good view. And this is, is a good view. But what they do have, that's nice, is a boardwalk here that goes down to the lakeshore. The boardwalk comes down to a viewing platform here and stairs that go down to the beach. And the beach is quite rocky. It does have some fine looking sand. However, it is pretty rocky and you can see rocks on the bottom of the water here. So I think I'm gonna pick a different spot to go in swimming. There's an island just a little ways offshore. Look how these trees fell over just right onto the beach. This boardwalk does go quite a long way along the shore with a few of these places where you can sit and watch the lake. And I have no idea what they're doing. Then this boardwalk turns away from the beach and goes through quite a large foresty area. Which brings us back up to the parking lot. And there is my motorhome. Here's what part of the scenic drive looks like.
And just a few miles up the road from there is the Big Pine day use area. And yes, look how thick the trees are here. There's the restroom buildings. And here's a path that goes down to the beach. Which is just a very short walk. And I think I found the place where I want to go swimming. <laughs> Looks much better beach here than at the lighthouse. So first I am going to fix my lunch and then go in swimming. And see what it's like in the water there. Well the good news is it's a nice soft bottom. The bad news is that it's ice cold. <laughs> So I'll do a little wading around, but I don't think I'm going to actually swim. There are also some unmarked and small parking areas like this that is paved with very close access to the beach. And here you can see pretty nice sand and then you can see in the water here where the smooth bottoms are right there and then where the rocky parts are out there and here there is something submerged that looks like kind of a boardwalk that goes out a little ways and there are several people down here it's a really long beach so this would get you more privacy if that's what you're looking for. And I've decided to wait and have my lunch here that I have to cook, cooking me some sausages because that last point where I was was fully tree covered. And here I'm getting in 60 amps of solar <laughs> so I can cook with electricity a lot easier. I passed up a few of those roadside parks and now I'm at Taqua Menon Falls State Park. Their campground is heavily shaded. You can tent camp and they also have 20, 30, 50 amp electric hookups. Here's kind of an odd display of those animal schools. <laughs> I asked at the office here and the campground fees with hookups is $35 a day. However, you also need one of these what they call passports and that's cost $36 a year. They have a fishing dock here. And there is a canoeer, kayaker, and here's the highway bridge. I'd say the water here is kind of iced tea colored. If you keep going all the way north along that road, you come to the Whitefish Point light station. And they've turned this lighthouse property into a major tourist attraction. I'm surprised how many people are here. It's like way out of the way from where anybody would be going. Here's a little bit of history of it. If you're interested, this place is known as the Graveyard of the Great Lakes. This is the inside of the Shipwreck Museum. And I think this is the biggest lighthouse lens I have ever seen. 
That is huge. It must be 12 feet high. Well, that was my exaggeration. <laughs> it says here that it is nine foot diameter. And here's some things that you would find in a lighthouse. But even with that, they still have shipwrecks. Well, this is quite a find. That's the actual bell from the Edmund Fitzgerald. There's some info on it. I bet you've all heard the Gordon Lightfoot song about the Edmund Fitzgerald. Let's see what else they got here. This is interesting. And here is the actual pole from the Independence. Got some diving equipment here. Here's a diving helmet from 1943. It says right there. I wonder if these are actually the real remains. I bet it is. Here's some divers. Here's the bell from a ship that sank in 1897. Here's some more various displays from other shipwrecks. Things they dredged up. Here's a story about two ships that collided with each other. Lots of stories here. You can look them all up later on Wikipedia if you really want to get the details. We got some of the ship models here. Look how water worn these wheels are. So that's what it looked like. Just a big cargo ship. Here's a little bit of info about it. And here's a modern version of a deep sea diving suit. This is how they got the bell. Here's some more artifacts. Well now let's see what's in the other building. That's the museum building right there. And there's several other buildings in the complex here and their lighthouse. Here's the rudder and tiller from the M.M. Drake ship. I'm going to go in the lighthouse keeper's quarters house. Here's the kitchen and it looks like he did his laundry here too. They've made a museum out of the house as you can see. How cute is this? The daughter's bedroom. And here is the lighthouse keeper's bedroom. And they have a baby maybe. Well, it seems to be a three bedroom house. I wonder how many currently still functioning day to day lighthouses there are. There he is, doing his paperwork. And here is the music and entertainment room. 
And here I thought lighthouse keepers quarters were much more minimal. <laughs> this is the Coast Guard boathouse. And in case you're wondering how they got the boat in here. <laughs> and there's the Coast Guard headquarters. We've got a huge viewing platform here at the lake and you can see all these. Wow, look at all these on the beach. wonder where they all came from. Looks like these are piers that got tore up in storms. There's one way out there. I've seen a lot of torn up piers in the Texas Gulf Coast. I only see one ship, which is way out there. Let's see how close I can zoom in. That's it. I guess all these logs at some point over a long period of time floated in from the lake when they had the big storms. Well now I had to drive back south to the town of Paradise. Nice name for a town, Paradise. And from there go west to go back up north to the community of Deer Park and then further west to Grand Marius. At Deer Park there's just a beach but there are some other things to see at Grand Marius. Well folks I am at Muscalange Lake State Park and what this is about really is a lake that is about a mile inland from Lake Superior. What you see here is Lake Superior and there's a trail down there that you can walk down to that goes down to the beach. I don't think there would be much to see other than just your average beach but this is a nice view from right here. I think. And this is at the town of Deer Park. And I was going to drive on the road from Deer Park to Grand Marius, but <laughs> I found that from here on it's a gravel road, a dirt road. And I am not going to drive a dirt road all that way. Deer Park is right about here. I do want to go to Grand Marius, but I got to go down like this and like this to get there on a paved road. <laughs>